Hello, my name is Paul Roberts and I'm a chemistry teacher here at Andover College. Today we're going to be looking at the core practical of preparing hydrated copper sulphate crystals. The reaction we're going to be looking at today is between solid copper oxide and sulfuric acid. The produced copper sulphate solution will then be partially evaporated and after a few days pure copper sulphate crystals will be produced. In terms of safety in this reaction, there are a few key points to consider. Firstly, dilute sulfuric acid of a concentration one mole per decimeter cubed is used. Therefore, it is important that safety glasses and lab coats are worn. Any spillages on the bench or splashes on the skin should be washed off immediately with plenty of water. This experiment also involves heating with a Bunsen burner. Extra precautions must be adhered to tying hair back, making sure there are no loose articles of clothing or any other flammable materials nearby. It is important to evaporate the copper sulphate solution with a hot water bath. Direct heating of the copper sulphate solution with a Bunsen burner could result in spitting of hot copper sulphate solution which will cause skin damage. To start off with, pour 20 centimetres cubed of one mole per decimetre cubed sulfuric acid into a measuring cylinder. Then add this to a 100 cm cubed conical flask. The reaction takes place faster at a higher temperature, so place the conical flask in a bath of hot water at 50 degrees C. In this example, I'm using a 400 cm cubed beaker as a water bath. However, if you use a large water bath, it is advisable to clamp the conical flask to prevent it falling over. Take care the water is no hotter than 50 degrees C as this may scald. After three to four minutes, the sulfuric acid should have reached temperature. Turn off the Bunsen, carefully remove the conical flask from the water bath, dry off the base of the conical flask and add half a spatula of copper oxide. Swirl the reaction mixture and you will notice that the copper oxide will slowly disappear as it reacts with the sulfuric acid, producing copper sulphate. Keep adding half spatulafuls of copper oxide to the reaction mixture with swirling until unreacted copper oxide remains in the conical flask. This will indicate that the copper oxide is now in excess and all the sulfuric acid has reacted. At this point, the blue color of the copper sulphate solution should be noticed. The excess copper oxide can now be removed via filtration. Fold a piece of filter paper into quarters, open one of the quarters out to make a paper funnel. Place the filter paper in an appropriately sized funnel and add a small amount of distilled water to bed the paper into the funnel. Do not keep any of the water that may come out of the bottom of the funnel at this stage. If you have a ring clamp, you can use this to hold the funnel in position over an evaporating basin. Alternatively, the funnel can be lightly clamped with a conventional clamp. Pour the reaction mixture into the filter paper, taking care not to overfill beyond the line of the paper. Depending on the thickness of the filter paper, and the amount of excess copper oxide, it may take a few minutes for the copper sulphate solution to pass through the filter and be collected in the evaporating basin. This is an ideal time to prepare the Bunsen burner for the next part of the procedure. Arrange the Bunsen burner away from flammable materials on a heat proof mat with a tripod, gauze and water bath. In this instance, I'm using a 400 cm cubed beaker, a third full of water as my hot water bath. Place the evaporating basin containing the filtered copper sulphate solution on top of the beaker. At this point, make a note of the height of the copper sulphate solution in the evaporating basin. Light the Bunsen with the hole closed, place the Bunsen under the hot water bath and then heat on a blue flame. It will take a few minutes for the water in the beaker to start boiling. When it does, the water in the copper sulphate solution will begin to evaporate. Once half of the water in the copper sulphate solution has evaporated, turn off the Bunsen 
and allow the apparatus to cool. Whilst your solution is cooling, write your name and copper sulphate crystals on the outside of the watch glass or a petri dish. When the evaporating basin is cool, add its contents to the watch glass or petri dish. Now leave in a warm part of the laboratory, uncovered for at least 24 hours. After two days, my copper sulphate solution has crystallised to produce some dark blue crystals of pure copper sulphate. Although tempting, make sure you do not touch the crystals with your hands. Refer to CLEAPS for further guidance. The crystals can be carefully removed from the solution by using tweezers and then dried on a paper towel. Take care not to wash these crystals as copper sulphate is soluble and your crystals will soon vanish back into solution. If too much heating has been applied, then your crystals will be considerably smaller and less impressive. In this practical, I've demonstrated how to prepare a pure sample of hydrated copper sulphate crystals. It would be a good idea for you to reflect on the techniques I have used today, and your teacher may provide you with further questions to help you understand this practical in greater depth.